welcome to another Dev and Chill with Memage. I'm your host, Memage. All right, we're gonna be doing some Epic Tavern work as usual. Let's see, got some uh, fun stuff we'll be working on today um, relating to the way that the uh, stages are set up inside of the quests. We're switching over to a uh, dynamic generation system so that uh, stages will generate as your party are out questing based off of the area of the map that they're in. Uh, I got working on our previous cast the difficulty pulling from that zone, but now the actual stage itself will pull from the zones. Um, so that will allow us to kind of customize which stages you get depending on where you are in the world. So that'll be awesome. Uh, also, another, some other exciting news, as uh, some of our uh, uh, pre-alpha testers will know, we do have a new unstable build up. Uh, see, sounds like we just got the clearance to uh, push that up to the stable branch. So uh, that'll be awesome for the people who are uh, unsure about doing the, the unstable themselves. They'll be able to finally get an update on all that stuff. Uh, in addition, that also means that we are going to be doing another raffle to give out five additional pre-alpha keys. We'll be doing that today on the stream, so definitely stick around for that. Let's see. Hey, Zonathus, how's it going? How's it going? Let's see. Drac, let's see. The, the newest unstable is going to, to stable. Uh, yes, it will be going to a stable. Uh, we, we, do, we do have some... Uh, uh, hot fixes planned for uh, some of the things that have uh, already been pointed out in it, but uh, overall, it's been determined that it is at least as stable as what is as what is on stable at the moment. So we're we're going to go ahead and push that forward, um, and that'll uh, that process will be happening later this afternoon, most likely. But let's see. Okay, so let's. Um, jump into what we've got going on and uh, see what we've got to do. Uh, so one of the processes that I'm going to have to do in this, uh, switching over the code real quick, um, let's see. So this is kind of similar to when we switched from the deterministic combat system over to a procedural combat system. Uh, it's, it's not enough to simply put in the procedural uh, element. We also have to go back through and strip out the deterministic side. Because um, basically what will happen right now is if, if I try to uh, set up a procedural generation system for the stages, it's effectively going to get stomped by the deterministic system, which comes in and tries to claim authority. So I need to go back in and kind of cut out the deterministic stuff so that the procedural stuff will actually show. Um, let's see. So I, I got started on this a little bit uh, last night and uh, got a lot of... A lot of it kind of uh, trimmed up, but I need to continue going through. So, like, one of these elements is this uh, populate stage node list. Uh, this is coming through, and uh, basically every time they're told to render the avatar path, um, it's checking to see if uh, it needs to populate the stage node list, and if so, then it uh, does so. If we come into this list, or into this uh, function, we see that's going through and uh, figuring out what the total distance that you're going is, figuring out what the maximum distance that we want between two stages to be, as well as what the minimum distance, and then trying to calculate how many uh, uh, um, stages need to exist to fill that extra uh, space. Let's see, Yes, uh, Rich is in office at the moment. He uh, comes back to visit us once in a while. He's, uh, he's officially located in uh, Austin, Texas now, but he does uh, fly back here to LA to uh, visit us occasionally. and. It, Today is one of those days, so he's uh, sitting right next to me, actually. Yeah, but you could go into more, de more detail in those areas. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so again, uh, the, the thing about this now is uh, this entire system is what's being deprecated. Like, I'm, we no longer want to have this idea that, oh, like, we're beyond a certain range and within another one, so we need to calculate up the number of stages to fill that space. Um, instead, again, we want it to be, um, let's see, probably some, s still a, a minimum and maximum value, but those will effectively work as saying, uh, do not spawn a new random stage while I'm moving if I just had one within X amount of time, uh, but auto spawn one if it's been more than this period of time. And then maybe have some random element in there to uh, 
vary up how often they spawn. But. Yeah, and I mean, if you want to work so you got the PowerShell script working? Cool, cool. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was, that, that was some interesting stuff, uh, trying to figure out uh, why exactly that wasn't working and how to get around it. <laughs> hey, Eddie, how's it going? Good morning, my friend. All right, so yeah, so there's where we're getting the travel stages and adding them in there. Um, so these, the, uh, this is kind of a misnomer function. It's not actually getting a travel stage type because travel stages are a type. Um, what this is really doing is it's getting a filler stage or a non-quest stage. Um, train of thought comments or the, oh, are there something? Probably. <laughs> See. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so hmm. what I want to do then is uh, I want to figure out how to bypass the system, but theoretically with, re with rewriting as little as possible. As is reasonable, um, I should say. L little as possible may not be the right call, but. Uh, as little as is reasonable. Hmm. So again, let's see, let's see, intercentral count, that's being generated from all of this being figured out. Right, right, right. <clears throat> okay. So again, this is, this is trying to generate the stage noted list before we actually head out. Uh, so, okay, well, some of the things that we're changing about this is uh, quest nodes are now not going to have just a hard sequence number, but will additionally have a, uh, uh, let's see, a, I'm trying to remember what the phrase is, but uh, basically a, a point of progress, uh, how far along the travel path should this particular node appear. Because uh, at the moment, the uh, each node is effectively being uh, laid out evenly over the course of the space. So if you've got uh, if you've got two nodes, then one will appear at the one third, and another will appear at the two third. Um, or actually, technically, the, the last one always appears at the end. So if you've got two nodes, one will appear at the halfway point and one at the end. If you've got three nodes, then it will be at the one third, the two thirds, and the the end. Uh, and again, that doesn't necessarily work out the way we want it to, but See, hey, to, uh, Tomoki14, how's it going? Let's see. <laughs> All right, so again, let me track back to where this is being called. Food poisoning. That's terrible. <laughs> okay. So again, okay, so this happening on every show avatar path, and theoretically we don't want or need that at all. Um, so let's try just removing that entirely. Means we want to remove it from there as well. So avatar path should just show the avatar path. That seems like it makes some sense. Uh, okay, so we don't need that to be used there anymore. That's a local variable. Likewise for that one, and we don't need the debug statements because similarly they are not being used either.
So that's certainly uh, gleaned out one of the places where that is pulling that data. So what was this? Okay, calc wait for new destination. So this one is also something that I want to be done differently. And once again, I don't need that anymore. Then this uh, populate stage node list is, is the deterministic side. If you're talking the stream, yeah, that's that. That's, that's uh, the the streaming channel is there for our uh, anybody who has permissions to join in and talk with me. So what? Yeah. Hi, Rich. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? <laughs> yes, for those of you who d did not know, uh, if you are in our Discord server and you have uh, achieved the coveted status of tavern patron, meaning your uh, name is Green. You do have permissions to talk in the streaming channel, so you are you are free to uh, converse with me and the rest of the fans during our streams. Um, again, just with the knowledge that that is a uh, that is a privilege, and if you abuse it, then certainly that will get revoked from you. But <laughs> we are pretty pretty lenient, so I wouldn't worry too much as long as you're not intentionally being a troll. I give myself 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, so now, good. So populate stage node list is not being called anymore. Uh, let me go to this innate, init stage node list, just to make sure that that's, okay, so that's not, let's talk about that. Let me see where all we're using the stage node list. Because I, I may still want to actually use the stage node list uh, as a repository to store them as they happen. Because I believe it's being used also for pulling historical data from, so to say, a, once you've already completed something to populate the uh, quest log with what happened. Because the stages retain the information about what happened in them. Hmm. That's interesting. So this Okay, so this isn't going to necessarily work anymore because what uh, what this section of code is basically doing is it's uh, it's determining if uh, like kind of yeah, just as this comment says, uh, de determining if we need to be switching to the next uh, quest leg. Um, but uh, it's doing that purely based off of uh, have we or is there a current index equal to the number of stage node nodes in our list? But since we'll be adding those dynamically, that number will be changing every time you hit a new stage uh, and will not be an accurate reflection. So instead, we are going to just want to look to see if we have completed the key stage or not. Uh, actually, not, not even the key stage. We want to know if you've reached your destination uh, key. Hmm. So I guess theoretically... All right, so actually th this could make sense. Um, we have a separate list of the nodes of the quest itself, so the pre-designed nodes for the quest. Uh, if we separately track which one of those you're on from your total list of nodes that you've done, uh, then we should be able to compare that and say, uh, are you are you on the last quest node? Because if you're on the last quest node, then that is means you're at the destination and are uh, ready to go on to the next leg. Okay, so that could work. Your statement was just commentary? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Originally it had other stuff in it, but uh, yeah, that got moved. It's it's still sort of valid, but because uh, it really it's just this, but nodded and moved the else case up, but. I 
memory. The, the processing difference between uh, reversing the uh, the polarity of this and moving that up is actually uh, negligible. Is when it determines that this it's it's going to run this statement either way. That's going to be either true or false. Uh, if it's true, then it executes this section. If it's false, it ex executes this section. Uh, let's see. Yes, one's all three. And since there's no code in this one, a true doesn't actually do anything anyway. But <laughs> yes, Jack. All right. So yeah, uh, it, it does look like the stage uh, node list is being used for uh, the historical data, but it's also being used in a lot of places uh, as a deterministic uh, accessor slash uh, information point, which is no longer going to be true. So I'm going to have to kind of I'm going to have to go through each of these accesses and figure out what is actually a legitimate use of it and what should no longer be used that way. For example, uh, let's come down to add stage node. So add stage, stage node is something that I'm going to want to use, but I want to use that procedurally as they're added in moving along the uh, quest path. So let me find, okay, so it's being called right there, and that is at the bottom of the populate stage node list. Okay, so we're no longer calling this function, so that is fine, uh, but we do need to make sure that we uh, use this at the moments that we actually add the new stage. So let me grab that section of code right there. So I started a new um, function somewhere. <laughs> Where was that? Actually, I think it was in Party Avatar. Let's see. Get new stage from zone. Yeah, this guy. So th this doesn't actually do anything yet, but this is set up to be the, uh, the function that we call when we want a, quote, random stage during your questing time. Um, now this, again, is not inside of the quest leg, so it can't just directly call this add stage node, although that is a public function, so maybe it can. Cause, yeah, because we can access the current, the current quest leg. Do this. Wait, uh, no. Okay. Let me grab all this and move it around. Oh, certainly. Yeah. Um, the uh, the stage node list uh, could theoretically be stored as soon as we complete the quest. In fact, it's already used at the end of the quest to populate the uh, quest log at that point. But it's, it, it is not currently being saved into the player's save data, which will need to happen in order for you to access it uh, on like subsequent turns as well as on later reboots of the game. Okay, so actually I don't want to do that. I want to access... Uh, jumped there, grab this again back here. So this wants to be dot that. Okay, so stage node, so travel distance. Okay. Okay, so that's where that's wanting to know where along the path you are. That's theoretically doable. And then the stage node itself. So that's going to be the zone node. <laughs> hey Jack, what's the, what's the busy, um, I just throw away or, just in case we, you know, the scale we have referred to an issue? If you want to uh, ignore it now, for now I'll ignore it. We won't run into it. Let's see, let me read back through some of these real quick. Let's go back through this. Let's see. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, the I do not worry about uh, uh, comments in code in that sense. Um, the uh, the Unity 
compiler uh, automatically strips out all comments when it uh, generates the build, so that has no impact on the actual build performance. <laughs> because we don't have anybody who swears in their comments. <laughs> right, Chow? So let me go back to quest leg and verify how exactly we're generating this. That is simply the quest stage gap plus, okay, so that's distance equal to diff between current, okay. Hmm. So this is literally the, basically that, that progress along the path. All right, that's fine, that's fine. Because um, we, should, we should have that when we're coming into here, uh, although, Let's see, is the party does the party avatar know how far along it is? It probably does. Let me see what. Hmm. Where does that quest stage cap come from? Okay, so that's simply that. Okay, and that's based off the node count, which is hmm interesting between each quest stage. Okay, right, because the, the previous system was trying to make sure that uh, you had an equal number of uh, random stages between each uh, designed quest node, which is, again, no longer even the way, the way we want to do it, because we may decide that we want to have a quest node followed immediately by another quest node, and then a long gap of just randoms, and then another quest node, or something like that. So, again, this... That's part of why we're getting rid of the system, is it's uh, it's too restrictive for what we're wanting to make out of it. Let's see. Won't that be a cause for access to documentation when we modders get it, since you either have to append back the comments or write out documentation for the modders on demand slash proactive? Well, so the, uh, a lot of the mod mod support is going to be in the data files and uh, the the data file documentation is uh, theoretically more stable um, let's see like the uh, su support for actual for changing actual code files is going to be pretty limited if existent um, again we just uh, with with the way the Kickstarter went and uh, other factors we just simply do not have the uh, resources to, again, do a, a full mod support suite. But uh, again, the data files will, will be left exposed. And so those you'll be able to change. And uh, we've got uh, we've got a, a wiki with documentation on the uh, data. And most of that was actually put together for our own designers for when they were trying to uh, create all of the data. Which, by the way, I, uh, I ran some calculations on uh, one of our simpler stages, uh, a stage that uh, simply has two heroes interact with each other. And uh, based off of the number of uh, um, possible combinations of different uh, races and name combinations and classes that those two heroes could be, uh, it, it generated, I think it was uh, 500 billion possible combinations for that one stage. <laughs> it was uh, pretty nuts. Hmm. All right, so and wh where is this initialization of being called? Just in the populate stage node list. Okay. Yeah, because I, I, I really don't want init stage node list being called really anywhere, I don't think, aside from perhaps on startup, if it's even needed there. Is, yeah, because no, all, all this is default data. So we should not need to do this at all anymore. 
So let's just remove that. Again, we're not actually calling these functions, so that shouldn't be a problem, but uh, want to make sure that we're not accidentally clearing out our uh, stage node list after we've populated it mo moving along. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so again, this, uh, this travel stage, this is really uh, get, uh, get procedural stage. So let me just do a, uh, a rename on that. Call it get proc stage. Apply that. OK. There we go. So, th so this is now much more accurately named. Um, let's see, where, where are we using this? All right, so we're using it under the get random replacement node, and we're using it within the popular stage node list, which again, we are no longer using. So, so this is the only important one, get replacement node. Where are we calling this guy? We're calling this guy in calc stage begin. All right, so this one is specifically being used. So th this is one example where we're already somewhat doing uh, procedural generation of a stage, but we're using it for uh, on the fly replacing a stage that you uh, no longer met the requirements for. So in this case, specifically, it was if we came across a stage that uh, was looking for two heroes to interact, uh, but due to characters dying, you only had one character left in your party. Uh, so we would take that stage and replace it with one that only only referenced one hero. <clears throat> All right. So I need to figure out, if it's not calc move points that I care about, it is the distance along the quest leg that we have moved. This is stage gap. Right, right, okay. Hmm. Stage gap plus i, which is the current iteration within the node list that we are, times the stage gap. Right, okay. So yeah, so, so this is a generated value that doesn't really reflect what we're wanting anymore. So I'm going to, need to figure out, uh, I suppose we're going to just want to add a new variable to the quest leg uh, that is tracking um, the progress, like how far along the total, but how, how far from the origin point to your destination are you? see. Again, these are going to be changed a little bit, but let's just put it up here for now. It's going to be a private float. Um, travel progression. Starts off as zero. So this will need to be, get updated every time that we uh, recalculate their distance or how far along they've moved. That's been done down through here somewhere, I believe. Or maybe not. Okay, where is that happening? Travel distance. That's, hmm, is that really only being generated there? Good grief. Is being done entirely wrong. <laughs> Actually, it's probably par party avatar that's calculating that. Okay, move points. Maybe. Hmm. So this is get current destination. It's on final leg. So I don't just want to do a direct. 
uh, reference of distance from our current spot physically in the world to where the destination is, because again, we're traveling on a path. So I want to see how much distance is left on, along that path, just in case, you know, it's starting here, going to here, but you got to go around the mountain up through there. So I want to track the total distance of that path. <laughs> see, when uh, when Revelo shuts down, we will be transferring your uh, all your guys' points over to a different system. So do not fret; you will you will not be losing your points. We're uh, still debating the best system to switch to, but uh, we will be your uh, your points have been tracked, and we'll make sure to uh, transfer those once uh, Revelo does finish dying. <laughs> It'll be sad to see it go. I've used Revelo since uh, about the time I started even using Twitch. Right, right. Hmm. So distance traveled is because like distance traveled is still a uh, good thing to look at. But uh, see, party data. Hmm. Party data might be an interesting thing to look at also because it's tracking all of that. Hmm, okay. So leg distance traveled in the party data will effectively have tracked, again, how far we've moved. So if we can calculate the distance from your origin point to the destination, again, along the path, then we'll know that you've reached your destination when leg distance traveled equals that value. And that should, again... Be information that's available to us, but it's going to be available through the nav agent because the nav agent is what actually contains the path. So let me figure out where. Okay, so here's where. Well, here's an example of where we're accessing the nav agent. So we get the speed there. It's with the warp to end. That's strange. Hmm. Well. Oh, okay. Making an adjustment here right now because I cannot stand to see that happen. The likelihood of uh, additional errors popping up from not having enclosure there is frightening. Hmm. So again, the 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 nav agent is what's controlling the movement entirely. So it's not like we're pushing it along, it's using the built-in uh, nav mesh agent to navigate the path that it's calculated. So again, I want to find where we generate that path, because that is where we're going to find, but that is where we will be able to store the distance to the uh, destination. Although technically the, the nav agent should know where its destination is, and theoretically be able to tell me how much uh, more distance it needs to travel to reach that. Let's see if I can access something like that. Uh, let me again do another one of these. Uh, okay, so nav dot. Uh, yeah, remaining distance right there. Okay, so remaining distance will return the distance along the path that it needs to go before it reaches its destination. Excellent, excellent. All right, so. Hmm. Actually, what was. So, stopping distance, no. Does it store. Well, I wonder if it stores the original total distance. Probably not. So, I may need to calculate that at the beginning. Uh, so, right after the path calculates, oh, I don't want to delete all that, just that part. 
merit. So when the quest leg starts, I'm going to want to cache the total distance that it needs to travel. Then I can use how much distance is remaining uh, with a subtraction there to, to figure out... Well, I, don't, I, I already know how much distance you've traveled due to the party knowing how much distance they've traveled in the leg, so that should be fine. But... Um, Oh yeah, okay, so I can just compare that to the distance remaining to figure out how far along the, the course I am. Because again, if, if, I've, if I've traveled f four units, and there are four units remaining, then I know the total distance was eight. At which point I know that I'm halfway there. Alright, so... Let's try to access some of that. Party leg distance traveled. Okay, let's just say this is a float real quick. Float uh, progress equals. All right, I'm just gonna get some of these labeled modest. Some of these down here. So okay, so distance traveled over distance traveled plus uh, nav dot remaining distance. So distance traveled plus the remaining distance is the total. So the amount traveled over that should give us the uh, the percentage of travel that we've made. We now pass this into here, and that should accurately be able to nail down the exact spot along our travel course that we did this. So fantastic. Uh, so with that saved, uh, the errors are not there anymore. Fantastic. Very happy about that. Um, hmm. We're a little past halfway into the stream. Um, what do we think about doing the raffle, guys? What? How about doing the raffle? Sure. Sounds like it could be good. All right. Uh, well, so I, I won't start the raffle technically for a couple more minutes because I'll, I'll give people a chance to uh, uh, get on this if they want to. Uh, so we've already prepared and have in a cup right around here the names of uh, Kickstarter backers who've uh, registered on our Discord server. So if, if you're on our Discord server and have already uh, gotten uh, added to our uh, backers list by contacting Sarah, then your name is already in this cup. Um, if you've done that within the last 15 minutes or within the last, if you've done that since I started the stream, your name's not in here yet. Uh, but if you're currently in the chat and you are a backer, uh, go ahead and let me know. I'll get your name written on a slip of paper and throw you in here as well. Uh, just to clarify, uh, if you are drawn and you and you have not already confirmed your backer status with us, you will need to do that before we can actually send you the key. As again, the keys are only for backers. Um, and I'll, I'll give you more details on how to do that if, uh, if that is the case. But uh, so if there's anyone, again, if there's anyone in the uh, Twitch chat at the moment, who is a backer and has not already uh, registered on our Discord server? Uh, let me know now, and I'll get you into the raffle. We'll be doing, we'll be drawing five names today. So there'll be five people who will get a pre-alpha key, so they can uh, join in on the, uh, again on the, uh, the closed alpha testing that we're doing. Hmm. <laughs> Are the physical rewards coming out post-release? I, I don't know the details on that. Um, if I uh, see if Sarah's around, maybe. Uh, uh, do we have any details on the uh, physical backer rewards yet? Not yet. Not yet, she says. Let's see, you've just lurked on that Discord, Donathus. <laughs> no, no, you're you're. Uh, you were already registered as a uh, Kickstarter backer. <coughs> so, let's see. And again, uh, as I, when I call out the names that we draw here, I'll be calling out the names as they're registered in Discord. So, um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's see. I'll, I'll go and do that raffle in uh, another four minutes. Or I'll start... I'll start pulling names in four minutes. Uh, let's see. In the meantime, I'll poke around a little more in the code. 
back over here. Actually, let me uh, switch over to Unity and see if I've got any compiler errors. Because there may be a reference I forgot to delete or something. And to, to be clear, my anticipated behavior at this point is, uh, yeah, I, it should compile. Uh, it won't run at the moment because uh, I have successfully deactivated the deterministic system and it is no longer pre-populating stages. Uh, unfortunately, it is not actually, act, I've not activated the procedural system yet, so it's not generating them either. So <laughs> if we tried to play at the moment, they would boot up, your party would move along the path and uh, reach its destination and then come back without any stages being triggered. <laughs> Let's see. Tomo says, I think Kickstarter described the physical rewards are going out after early access and before the game reaches full release. I'll check on that though. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that sounds familiar, but uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try to get back to you guys on with details on that. Hmm. All right, so cool. Com compilation was successful. That is uh, exciting. <laughs> Interesting comment, Tomo. <laughs> Uh, all right. So this uh, get procedural stage is something that uh, well, I'm probably going to want to call from party avatar here in this uh, get new stage from zone. Um, but I want to expand that out with some additional parameters, I think, so I can request more than just a stage type. Uh, that said, the quest leg might, does quest leg, the quest leg does not have access to the party directly, I don't think. Um, let me kind of scroll down here and verify if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I will need to pass in the zone so that it can uh, actually draw that. Because at the moment, it doesn't know where it's at. Because the, the, the party knows where they're at and can pull the zone. Um, so, let's... Um, So, can we, where's the, okay, so right there is where we're actually getting the quest leg. So let's uh, actually save that, uh, quest leg, uh, or just cur leg, we'll call it, cur leg, grab this data. leg will be accessed off of that and then we also want to uh, ch -ch 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 move you down to here and pull you from cur leg dot uh, get proc stage and okay so it wants a bucket type. Hmm. Well, no, so this is where, you know, I don't want to actually hit pass a stage bucket type in here directly yet. What I'm going to want to do is just pass in the zone and then have it, because the, the, the zones have waiting on which type of uh, stage type it's looking for. So yes, I will <laughs> bless you. Uh, no. Hmm. What is that? It's, uh, oh. zone, right? Something like that. Hmm. Did not like that. Where is that? Maybe that's in the party data? That could be. Party data, oh, there's an accessor right there. Do that. Dot. Cur zone, there we go. All right, and cur zone is a map dot zone, right. All right, so jump over there. And you now want a map dot zone. Zone. All right. Uh, it's kind of like um, uh, a slightly lesser um, Trying to get rid of that for now. Trees those both need to be temporarily commented out. Try saving. Uh, oh, you're upset now. Whatever. 
Look, I'll just comment out that entire function. Okay. Because theoretically, I won't need to do the replacement node anymore, because uh, the proc stage, I'll be able to uh, run those checks anyway. But, okay, uh, we are to the point to actually draw our names now. Woo! All right. Uh, let's see. Rich. What? Would you like to uh, draw our first name out of the cup? Hell no, I'm drinking. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> oh, you mean those things are compatible? All right, we'll rattle around the cup. All right, so again, so... Draw the first name. Okay. Read it. Yep, read it. Read it. Who gets the first one? It is... D -d -d Daniel. Congratulations, Daniel. A key will be coming your direction. Dan Daniel's hanging out. Uh, let's see, I, I don't know if Daniel's in our chat at the moment, but he uh, is in the okay. Discord server. So, uh, yeah, keep the names to the side. Yep, yep. All right. All right. So are we doing somebody else? Somebody yep, else? we're doing four more. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> Look, I want to choose all of you. Let me see if I can get all of you in this next choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no pressure, Rich. <laughs> I'm going to choose all of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Who do we got? We got. We got. Val's Noisy two toys. toys. Val's Noisy Toys. Val's Noisy Toys. Congratulations. Val's Noisy Toys. You guys look put look, what looks like um like check. Like <laughs> those like weird the weird like. <laughs> Yeah, Rich, yeah. Rich says are Sarah has weird handwriting. Are you secretly a Czech uh, spy? All right. Raised by parents. Why does she stick sort of like word letters in there? Yeah. Number three. Oh, is your E like a sigma? No, it was like there was like a little U over the S. <laughs> All right, let's see. Who do we got? Ba 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 ba. Seonin. Seonin, congratulations, Seonin. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Number four. Uh oh. No pressure, Rich. No pressure. I'm gonna pick the one that feels like a Z, so I can get Zon. <laughs> All right. Let's see what happens. Wow, and it's Goldie. 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 Congratulations. For those of you who are unaware, Goldie is indeed Zondithus, so <laughs> congratulations, Zond. Is it really? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good laugh. <last. laughs> All right. Number five. Oh, we're doing five of these? Oh, yep. Okay. All right. Yay me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. I'm not looking for I'm looking for I'm looking for I'm looking for Tig Pack. Tig Pack. Congratulations, Tig Pack. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So those are our five people. Um, I'm going to draw two more that I'll set aside. I'm not even going to look at these at the moment, but if if uh, any of our five people decide not to claim their key for whatever reason, then we'll go over to these other two. So here's one I'm setting aside. Again, not even going to look at these because if all five people choose them, I don't want to get these people's hopes up, but two have been set aside. Right. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Okay. Yay. Thanks for letting me do that. Boom. <laughs> what happened? A mother's love when it completes. Oh wait, a mother's love has a seven turn unlock delay. Does that mean once it's unlocked, it takes seven turns before it shows up, right? Okay. Awesome. Unlocked it's gonna be great to get you guys in there. So we got a uh, got a special channel just for the uh, okay, so pre-alpha people in Discord, so they can uh, report issues that they run into. And we'll be sending like the like what like a survey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll be sending out, uh, along with the key, will be a survey if you can, uh, you guys can fill that out when you get it. Mother's love completed. But... Mm -hmm. And the next All right. stage back in the month that it got was this. It's always fun to do those. But back into the code, I suppose. <laughs> and then, by the way, and then you look at a mother's love. All right. Um, so, right, we don't need 
to so full yeah. specific. Okay, well, we are going to get a bucket type, but we're going to be no, generating that randomly based off of the zone. It's like, uh, so let me just real quick pop open the zone. Let's see. On moment. Right. All right. So let me just first jump to the zone definition, so I can show what's in there. All right. So we've got the we got the name of the area, the description, uh, difficulty minimum, difficulty maximum, uh, and then we got these weights, and this is what we're going to want to look at. Um, let's see. Now we could theoretically have. No, this will be fine. Um, so we're going to be using these weights to impact uh, how often you see a particular um, stage type in that area. So that way we can say, you know, if you're maybe if you're in the city, you're more likely to encounter uh, social stages versus if you're uh, out in Dragon Mountain, you're more likely to encounter uh, combat stages. You know, to fight off all those uh, vicious knights that are hunting down the dragons. Okay. Right. So I'm going to need to create some sort of accessing mechanism to uh, pull this out. Uh, so these. Hmm. So, I, so I technically want these to all effectively uh, give us a, to, we want these to sum up to uh, one. So a zero to one, but technically it's zero to some value capped such that uh, all of these combined equal one. Um, and I don't have any way to necessarily easily enforce that from the uh, data side. So what I may do is have uh, a function that simply uh, takes all of them combines them, normalizes them, and then uh, generates the effective value off of that. Hmm. All right, so so that's one thing I need to do. Um, another thing is, let's see, let me track down these, the, again, the, the stage node. Um, The add stage node. Where is that thing? Right. Stage node list. Add stage. Yes, yeah, stage node. Right. So the stage node. I'm going to want to expand out to add in some additional data. Um, amongst that uh, will be, again, that uh, the progress point uh, where along the quest line it should uh, pop up as well as uh, we're going to flesh out the idea of a dungeon a bit better and uh, give us the ability to specifically designate a stage node as being a dungeon node. Um, this will give us access to a bit more robust functionality in terms of uh, allowing multiple uh, stages to happen at the same location on the map, uh, as well as give us a little bit more uh, flavor text for those. So we'll be able to specifically say that a given stage type should only happen in a dungeon. Um, so that way we can get a little bit better um, contextual information and uh, make the procedural generation look like it makes more sense. <laughs> okay. Does this accommodate the make and break camp stuff as well? Um, it will, yes. Yes. Talk a bit oh yeah, that's, that's a good point. Good. Yeah, so uh, something that we're going to be uh, adding in additionally is um, the idea of making and breaking camp. Um, so those of you who have uh, either been watching us for a little while or those of you who are in the uh, pre-alpha will know that uh, one of the stage types that pops up is a travel stage. Uh, the, it's a, a blue outline and is it's inconsequential to what's going on in terms of uh, like party conflict. Uh, it's just kind of a flavor thing to give you a, uh, a heads up about some event that the uh, adventurers encountered uh, that, that wasn't significant, but was perhaps interesting. Uh, so to really kind of nail down the idea of the fact that the adventurers are traveling over a course of days, uh, when an adventuring party starts, they will get a travel stage at the spot they start at that is them breaking camp, them 
packing up their stuff and heading out and maybe giving some details about the area or how they're feeling that morning, things like that. Uh, then likewise, at the end of the day, there'll be another travel stage that will be them making camp, them finding some hollow or a cave or just a nice clearing and setting up camp, maybe maybe reminiscing about something that happened during the day or something like that. Um, you know, l licking their wounds, cleaning their weapons. So that's, that'll be a fun thing. Um, yeah, Tom was giving some more details there. <sighs> Let's see. Hmm. So for uh, for those of you who are in the channel uh, who heard all the talk about uh, Discord and aren't sure what the hell we were talking about there, uh, this link right below my frame, that will get you into our Discord server. It is a great place to go to to chat with the uh, staff at whatever hour of the day, as well as, again, a lot of our more long-term fans uh, who really know as much about the game as a lot of us do are on there. And... Uh, Great people to talk to. They can field a lot of uh, a lot of the questions about uh, how things are set up in the game, or kind of where we're planning on going with it. Um, certainly, if one of us is available to answer a question, we will. But uh, again, a lot of a lot of knowledgeable people, not a lot of knowledgeable people on there. If they throw an at Tomo in that in that Discord oh, channel, yeah. I will respond within a day. Yes. Yeah. For, in case you guys couldn't hear that, uh, Tomo is just saying that if you guys throw an at Tomo down in the Discord server, uh, he will respond within a day. Um, and again, all of us use Discord, so uh, ah, Sarah's running off with the names. <laughs> cool. Um, but yeah, so uh, all of the staff use Discord for our uh, office communication, so we're on it all the time. Um, or at least all the time that we're working. <laughs> Dude, I need <laughs> poking huge spiders in the butt with my finger is too Holy crap. <laughs> this is the craziness that goes on in the Discord, by the way. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 <sighs> oh my god, who kicks her back or whatever? Right. Alright, um, so, let's see, we are coming up on the end of the stream. Um, let's see. Actually, let me read through and make sure I didn't miss anything. Let's see, will the biohistory update for each quest or only for significant events? Will dead patrons be referenced by their former party members? Uh, so, <laughs> we, we have implemented uh, reminiscing into the game, so uh, event, different events that happen will indeed be referenced by those by the characters who are uh, involved with it. Uh, the So, we kind of got two different uh, things associated with the character at the moment. We've got the bio and the uh, the quest history. Um, our our uh, design group is still working on the exact details of how that's going to interact, but the theoretical difference between them was that uh, bio was uh, is stuff about the character's past that uh, you will learn more about as you get to know them more and more, versus their their quest log history is uh, a basically a a summarized listing of major things that have happened to them while they're out questing since you met them. Um, or so, but basically a, a short summary of uh, their career with you. Uh, again, that, that may change depending on uh, what we decide makes sense, but uh, yeah. Hmm. If the party's wiped out, will other patrons know and talk about them? Uh, that's certainly possible. Again, uh, the, the patrons um, do have the ability to know about each other. Um, so let's say that you've got, uh, it, if you send a party out with each other, they come back, and then you split them up into multiple groups and send them out, and then one of those dies. Uh, the the people in that who had previously partied with one of the people in the other parties will still be known by them. Um, so I don't know if, we're, if we've got any direct uh, reminisce strings for that specific situation, but uh, it's certainly something that could be done. Uh, let's see. Um, but yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, if you've been lurking in the channel... Um, Go ahead and throw out an 07, and I'll give you a quick call-out before the end of the stream. Uh, otherwise, again, our our normal end of the stream stuff. Uh, if you want general updates on what's going on, uh, further down the page, down below us, we've got all of our links to our social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. Uh, certainly follow us on all of those. 
If you've enjoyed this stream, up in the top is the little heart. Uh, click that to follow us. There's also a little uh, toggle checkbox if you want to get a notification anytime we go live. Wednesdays are the engineering casts, usually led by me, but occasionally by Jack, our uh, senior programmer. Um, let's see, if you like art, Fridays are the best time to tune in for that. And on Mondays, we have a creative design stream, usually done by either Sarah or Tomo. Um, let's see, and again, best place to go for constant daily updates is this Discord link right below me. So definitely recommend that if you're really excited about the game and want uh, kind of minute by minute updates on what's going on. All right, uh, who do we got in the channel? We've got Zondathus. We've got uh, we've got the wrong house. We've got eighty. We've got Drac Dorai. We've got let's see anybody else still hanging out? Um, yeah. Uh, special thanks to uh, of course our uh, moderators, Toma Morawaki. Uh, I believe uh, Sarah's manning Epic Tavern today. Uh, let's see. Much love to Revlobot. We will miss you. <laughs> Bye, boop, boop, beep, beep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, looks like that's probably going to wrap it up for today. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out and chilling with me. It's been a lot of fun. And I uh, hope you guys have a great week. Oh, oh Degender DD, DD jumping in at the very end. Hey, how's it going? Glad Cheers you could make it in. Cheers, yeah. All right. Have a good one, guys. See you later. <laughs>